Canada's Manny Osborne parody. He is a true character. He is a true downhiller and speed competitor. Here comes Manny Osborne parody. He's flying. Chucks for the line. And he's there. There you have it. My name is Anastasia Busis. I am going to be your CBC Sports host for this evening. But of course, it's not about me. It's about this guy, Manny. Uh, congratulations. You announced your retirement just over 24 hours ago. How has this day been? Uh, it's been busy. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> How's the reception been? Uh, oh, I mean, it's been it's been pretty awesome. I mean, there's been so many young ski racers that have reached out which is pretty cool and uh you know just i don't know just I, i've connected actually with a lot of old media friends from like the earlier days and um and you know did, did a couple pieces with them today and yeah it's been it's been a real whirlwind actually i, I really didn't anticipate that at, at all and uh i think maybe i was just a bit naive because it's been it's been busy <laughs> Yeah, you are naive. What? 16 years, four Olympic Games, six World Championships, a million medals. Uh, this seems a little bit naive, but uh, I, I know that we have a lot of friends lined up, a lot of teammates lined up, and uh, we're going to toast and roast you and celebrate everything that you have achieved. Um, but before we get there, uh, just a few housekeeping rules. There are no rules. Guys, we're here to have fun. Uh, we're in a pandemic. Of course, we would have loved to have done this in person, but we're making the best out of a situation and we're going to have a ton of fun for this yeah. next hour. Um, on a personal note, I want to toast you. Uh, my good man, as in another life, I was an athlete myself and had the privilege of uh, competing in a few Olympic Games with you. And I just always appreciated your friendship. And, you know, sometimes we wouldn't talk for, six months, nine months, a year, and nothing ever changed. You didn't change, your values didn't change, and you certainly always made me feel as though what I was doing was of value and that uh, I could tackle anything in my way. So I appreciate you. That was a little sappy. Don't get Thank used you. to it. No. But, uh, <laughs> no, I, 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 I wore it here, so this is good. This is good. I wore a dress for you, okay? Like, that's how much I respect you. I didn't even wear a dress to my retirement party, so it's a big deal. Um, and, and, and for this, so I mean, this was a good, this was a big deal to, as well, you know. Oh, uh, CBC Sports has given you a lot of love. Team Canada has given you a lot of love. I actually want to throw just to a few pictures that um, Team Canada posted on their Instagram. I want you to walk me through a few of those photos. All right. And then uh, we're going to get to a few friends. What's this? You look like a baby in this photo. Uh, oh, yeah, I was, I was a baby. Um, I used to think that shaving the, before the downhill was faster. I don't know. I got away from that. But that's that's at the Olympics in Vancouver. Yeah, that's in Vancouver. Uh, that's um, where I look. It's like I'm third there. Um, I'm not sure what race that was. I think it was Vingen, and uh, my mom was there. Oh. Manny's the man. You know, she's she's a big fan of mine, and um, that was pretty fun to have her there. Uh, this is in St. Moritz, uh, super G race. It looks like, cause I've got pads on and, um, uh, that, that was my world champs day and, um, here in Vancouver coming down. Oh, you know what? The first, first picture must've been from, uh, from Torino. This I was going to say, you didn't shake in that. This is, look, look at that face. Can we go back for a sec? Like this is, um, <laughs> that's right. When you notice what you, what you've placed, obviously, cause you don't know how you've gotten the, that's, that's the face of disgust of like, yeah, that's pretty disgusting. I right? had that face a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the face of grit. I actually, I think I did pretty well, um, there, but I'm, I, I can't tell that's, that's Torino. This is, uh, the suits from Pyeongchang. Um, yeah, I did well in the first training run. <laughs> wow. Great memories. And uh, I oh, want to yeah. uncover a few of them. So let's let's just jump to it. Who are our first guests? I think I know them. Uh, Robbie yeah, Nixon, of course. Canadian royalty, longtime national mm -hmm. team member, and uh, Manny's best friend. Buddy, how are you doing? <laughs> Hi, guys. Thanks for having me on. Uh, this is awesome. 
Thank um, you for joining. Yeah, I know I'm, I'm at home in Whistler and obviously, you know, it just, it's a, kind of a cool experience. Obviously COVID really made it a bit of a challenge to connect a little more than we'd want. Um, but to be able to put this together is really cool. And I uh, obviously super proud of you, Manny. You know, I've <laughs> obviously seen, seen uh, you from a long time ago when we were really young and worked our way through, uh, all the levels up to, you know, on the team together for many years. And yeah, man, it's, uh, it's really nice to see uh, all the accomplishments you've had and you know, obviously some ups and downs, but, um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you and I'm stoked for you. And I, yeah, I'm really happy to be here with you. Thanks buddy. You see, I brought, um, I wore this shirt. Um, I, I'm, I, a, because, now that I'm not an athlete, I'm only going to be able to wear white for a little longer and then I'm going to have to go to black shirts. But also, Ski Club 95, 96. Uh, your grandpa gave me this shirt, remember? And he no, said, he didn't. He said, don't don't wear this. It's good. It's bad luck. Don't wear this until you're retired. So this is, this is a shirt that I've had in my closet. And uh, it's actually pretty, like, I was always worried. I was like, oh, I should, like, hang it up or what about moss and all that stuff. But, like, Old shirts, man. Like this is this. I could you realize though that that's back when it was it's really ski club was still going on. Yeah, yeah. Well, I remember this is how I yoinked it because your grandpa was like, <laughs> "Oh, I've got all these sweet shirts," and uh, you're like, "Oh, that's the coolest one." And I'm like, "Yeah, but you're a Black Home Ski Club member, so you can't have that." <laughs> <laughs> so this is I yoinked this one. It's but uh, big memento to to your grandpa, obviously. I actually had a conversation about him the other day with, with a ski uh, instructor here and uh, he had worked with them and it's pretty pretty cool. And yeah, yeah. and like your grandparents, you know. That's the night. <laughs> well, and the t-shirt. Not a scotch, just the beer, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, t-shirt, you, you're like, that's a hipster t-shirt now, so it's perfect. Uh, I've just gotten word that we have two more guests joining us. Uh, Olympic silver medalist Dylan Moscovich and Olympic champion, world champion Patrick Chance. Hard to find something that the guy's not good at. Welcome. Yeah. What, what, do you guys just had nothing better to do on a Wednesday, or why are you here? Yeah, I mean, it, it filled my time, so I threw Manny in there. <laughs> That's good, buddy. I thought that you weren't going to make it, so I was, I was kind of bummed, and then uh, here you are, right? Yeah, man. You, you right. guys both have nice facial hair, nice uh, pandemic sure. I mean, facial hair. The COVID yeah. cheek, the COVID cheek. <laughs> yeah. Well, and Patty, look at that duster. What's going on up there, buddy? I got an itch. <laughs> That's real nice. That's real nice. <laughs> <laughs> here. Um, I want to hear some Olympic stories from Dylan and Patrick because there is something so funny about uh, the alpine skiers and the figure skaters being like best friends forever. Uh, you want to start, Chitty? You want me to go? Oh, you go for it. I got less stories, so I'll go first. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so my games was Sochi, um, and at the uh, at the pre um, the pre Olympic summit, we all became uh, quick best friends, which was pretty awesome. Um, and then uh, you know, being at my first games was really exciting. At times, overwhelming, but pretty awesome. And I remember walking through the Olympic Park. I think I hadn't even competed yet. Maybe I did one program and. I saw Manny coming through. He just looked so relaxed, like he, he was done. And I was like, hey, man, it was so great to see a familiar face. Gave him a big hug, you know, and I'm like, oh, it must be so nice to be done. He's like, no, 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 I got to ski again. He's good. It's good. I'm like, all right, all right. Well, if he's this relaxed, I can be this relaxed. That's fantastic. And another one would be a uh, really loud voice in the rink. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. A yeah, good yeah. cheer. Good times. I mean, the rest of the stories we'll uh, we'll save for another time. But <laughs> time, man, and and congrats on a, an incredible career. It's an honor. Uh, you know, I, I always say that your uh, your buds you go to the games with, and you kind of you spend your career with, you're bonded with forever. So, cheers to you, man. You're the man. Thanks, buddy. Cheers. Cheers for sure. Patrick, uh, <laughs> you retired how long ago? Two years ago now. Uh, it's coming up on two? three. Coming, oh, up on coming up on three. When were yeah. we in Whistler? That was two years ago already, hey? Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah time funny. flies, man. <laughs> time flies. What Especially uh... during COVID. <laughs> yeah, big time. Especially. Uh, what advice do you have for Manny? 
Manny, you gotta you gotta donate your racing suits. Never wear them again. <laughs> <laughs> Get rid of them. <laughs> Get rid of them quick. <laughs> we still wear your skating outfits around the house now, so what's that about? <laughs> Mine is splitting at the seam. <laughs> <laughs> and bring all your medals with you all the time. <laughs> Show them around <laughs> when you're applying for jobs, because you know. Mm. The job is a real right? thing. Unemployment mm -hmm. is a real thing. <laughs> um, yeah, buddy, man. Like, I'm so, I'm so happy for you. You're, it's been such a ride being retired, and um, you've had such an amazing career that I've, I'm so fortunate to have been a, a, a small part of. And, um, and you know, you're always going to be a, a good friend of mine, and you've, you are a big part of these memories that I will always cherish at each of these games, and. Um, you're that one constant at every one of them. Uh, you're always there. <laughs> well, <laughs> I try not to do it too well, bad. otherwise they wouldn't invite me back, I figured, right? <laughs> so I just thought, steady Eddie, stay under the radar, <laughs> go to a bunch of them. This is Manny's year. We're going to root for him again. He's got yeah. it. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> I'm so glad that he didn't get a, a, a podium last time. <laughs> well, well, you know, yeah. Yeah. Everybody, we we connected. Uh, what was that? That was that. That was in Vancouver, right? At the um, at the Olympic summit for uh, Torino. No, which one was it? For uh, oh, it was for before Cuba, right? 2014. Yeah, sorry. That's right. And man, was that fun! Like I think, like the bond that the downhillers and the figure skaters have is ridiculous. I don't know what that is though. Like, yeah. is it like Andex. Put it this way: There's a reason we jive, man. We jive. tight pants, and I think we just bonded over it. You know? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. <laughs> like it, it's been it's been so much fun, and like Patty, you know, when we were up in Whistler, and 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 Scott was there, and you, and like you know, we we had a, a great dinner, and like it's so great to connect with you guys. I mean, I connected with Stage when we were in Toronto, and you know, Dylan, you're pretty cool. I, I, we haven't seen each other in a long time, but uh, <laughs> we, we definitely need to connect. And man, it's like, it's it's just so much fun. Um, I think the last time we were all together um, might have been there or maybe, maybe when was the last time, I guess, Patty and Stage, we were together when we were at Worst in Calgary after uh, Stars on Ice. Stars on Ice, that's also, <laughs> it's a built-in fun. Um, mm -hmm. I want to hear quickly from Robbie though. Robbie, can you introduce us, uh, introduce yourself for everyone? Uh, my name is Robbie Dixon, um, fellow <laughs> <laughs> teammate of Manny's and obviously got to know Patty and Dylan over the years, same way through the, um, through some of those, the Olympic meetup back in 2013, I think it was. And, uh, we, yeah, like you said, we hit it off the downhillers and the figure skaters. <laughs> Probably is the tight pants that really brought us together, but you know, yeah, it's got to be and a good time. I always about having a good time, so mm -hmm. it's pretty special to see you all together here. Uh, it has been a few years now. Um, Patty, we've been trying to get together, go biking, and that hasn't happened yet. Next time we're in we the city, make that happen. Yeah, Robbie and I had a sport yeah, meet last time we were in, in Vancouver, and we did we mountain biked and golfed, and um. And then we we walked this god awful course that uh, was I'm so good. Cart next time, and we're <laughs> we're gonna cart it. We actually said it was three sports day because we hiked and golfed. Like why they would let us go out there? Um, <laughs> I, I want to just quickly invite two other beauties in who are very good yeah. at biking and golfing and everything and enjoy uh, wearing spandex just as much as we do. Jesse Lumsden, Helen Upperton, come in. Come in from the power of the internet. Oh, <laughs> hey, buddy. Hello. Hey, Helen. How you doing? Hi. Congrats, Manny. You're a oh. legend, buddy. Oh, you guys, I love you guys. Are you kidding me? No. I'm glad they put everybody on the top bar here without hair, Robbie. You know, suit. It's it fit in here, <laughs> probably right? got the hats on, right? Yeah. That's why you guys are wearing the hats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, you know, the the bobsledders too. You know, we uh, we all trained together, so I always felt like I was never really talking that much to the bobsledders because they were over on one side of the gym with all the weights. Yeah, we were waiting for them to be done with their set so some of the plates could come over our way. <laughs> and we could lift, or like one plate actually is probably like you know. <laughs> can you guys spot me? We do, we do all the like, are you done warming up? And 
yeah. like that. We were talking on the golf course afterwards, and and then at, at Cowboys. So we did, we, were, we were taking care of business in the gym, Manny. Mm, that's what it was. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I went I went. Uh, Helen took me down the bobsled track uh, one time, and uh, that was like that was terrifying. Like, come on. No. Yeah. Yeah. It was so scary. Was it my driving? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it was. I know that I didn't want to be a brakeman after that. I knew that. Yeah. Aren't you used no. to speed though? What was so terrifying about it that you weren't in control? Probably. Well, in skiing, you can slow down whenever you don't want to go that fast in a turn. Yeah. yeah. And in bobsled, you're kind of stuck with whatever you've got, right? Like. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> yeah. And four man is even worse because you can't tap the, the your brake man to start braking. No, you can't break ever. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, you, you, you get yeah, I, guess, I mean, if you if you want to do well, you wouldn't want to break. I get it. No, you get you get a fine if you pull the brakes in the track because it wrecks the ice. Oh, but that's a team sport. So your Bob one goes down and then Bob two breaks the whole way, gets yeah. disqualified. But yeah. the track's wrecked for everybody else. Yeah, exactly. Has anybody ever done that? <laughs> like strategy. You know, you sacrifice one team. You got a bunch of Germans behind you. Just chew up the track. <laughs> I mean, That's it doesn't seem like, boy. like fair. You know, I don't know if like the ethics committee would be out there celebrating your win, but I think, I think win, think you know, right. for a tough, uh, um, you know, a, a country that maybe is it, it only could get two sleds in the race. <laughs> yeah. Hey, where are you right now? Uh, I'm at home. I'm where? at home. In uh, in Invermere, yeah. Invermere, yeah. That's yeah. You, cool. mm -hmm. And you, you guys are in Calgary, right? Justin and Hells are calling from Calgary. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. I was just in Vancouver with oh. and happened to you know find some time for Chitty and I to get together for a couple, which was always a a treat of a time. <laughs> Did he have his mustache when he, when you were there? Yeah, it's a really good mustache. He brings that out in public, hey? <laughs> Better on camera than in person, I swear. Is it really? <laughs> the little sparse in person. No, oh, no, it's, it's it's a gorgeous stash. You're doing you're doing it justice. I like going out in Vancouver with Patrick because everybody recognizes him. Yeah. So it's it's great, you know. You and he's got, like, he's got a big vibe with like parts. like like the middle-aged woman thing going on and it's <laughs> good. I mean Dylan also but I haven't seen Dylan I'm no, Patrick Chan. I'm no Patrick Chan no it's true Patrick you've got some like shiny middle-aged woman lure on, like a pet to your, to your chest or something That's figure skating superpower man yeah <laughs> it's figure skating superpower absolutely no comment <laughs> um jesse and helen what retirement advice do you have for uh mr osborne parody i mean manny has kind of set the bar real high for you know how to live as an athlete and i'm sure he'll do the same as a retired athlete it's uh i mean he, he, he had the I mean, he has the wheels in motion to, to continue on to a, a great career and whatever he does, he's got the, the network. And my, my guess is he'll just spend most of the time on the golf course anyway, just like his athletic career. So <laughs> doing it, I think he's, I think he's doing it, doing it the right way. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. This is my advice for you. Ready, Manny? Mm, yeah, what is it? Wife, Lana and little peanut daughter there that when we're athletes, our job requires us to be incredibly selfish to accomplish our goals. And we lean on family and friends and all the people around us to support us through these long careers. And when you retire, you finally get to give all that love back to all these people. And that's like one of the best things is that you finally have the time and the energy to give it to all those amazing people that supported you in your whole career. So perfect timing from the, from the, fan from the family showing up. Cause that's <laughs> what I think has been the best part about retiring. Yeah, I feel like I almost feel like that, you know, obviously I didn't like mentally retire yesterday, but I, I felt like I've, I have more, more, more energy to give other people and not be just as selfish day to day life. Yeah, you know? I mean, it's not, I mean, it's not a bad thing we had to, you have to, otherwise you can't accomplish the goals, but it's so great to flip the switch when you're done. It's been really helpful, you know, him retiring while we had a new baby because now he can really, you know, step up on the stay at home dad thing. <laughs> I'm going to add that song. Are you going to stay at home dad thing? 
Maybe? Yeah, we're, we're feeling you on the two kid baby vortex, right? Oh, man, I know. We need like, to get flow and slow together. I reach like 12,000 steps at 11 a.m. and I'm <laughs> like sprinting up the stairs, like, take yeah. this one. I got the other one. Oh, man. Yeah, hey, do you want to tell Dylan and, and Patrick about your skating lessons today? Oh. Oh. She was helping all the young kids get up when they fell today. Hey. Uh huh. And what are you most excited oh. about this winter? Ski lessons? No, okay. Santa. Maybe, and Santa. Come visit, we'll give you, give you a lesson. Ski lessons. Yeah. yeah, you can get a lesson from Patrick and Dylan. I also know how to skate, but I don't know how to turn left. So I don't I know if I And backwards, like who would have said like, let's just do our routine backwards the whole time. Frontwards won't get us any points. I know. I know. Let's no. go backwards, see how many points we get. I'd like to see the first skater that thought, I think the judges will be more impressed if I do this backwards. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. I don't, you guys don't skate forwards very often. Figure skaters. More backwards. Jumps. Is it more backwards? Yeah, it's totally more backwards. Yeah. Hit turn, backwards. working arms out like this. That's really nice. Right? <laughs> I'm waiting for the CBC. Uh, what's the, 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 the battle of the blades to open up to other than hockey players? Because I know Manny, Dix. I mean, what, what the heck? Yeah. Everybody can play hockey. Everybody can skate. I'll put, it, I'll put in a word. I'll put in a word. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Dylan, would you be my partner, buddy? You, you want to be partners yeah. together? Like no pro? Awesome. There's no way you can awesome. pick up Manny. No, no, I would do the lifts. <laughs> yeah. You don't believe in muscles for like another couple. You don't months. believe in me? You never tell a pair guy that he can't lift you. That's like <laughs> that's true. Like, like pairs is probably all confidence. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anastasia, you'd be good. No, well, I said I couldn't turn left, and I will say this: I've seen Patrick Chan do uh, an axle on my mother's dull hockey skate, so I can say with confidence. He's a better skater than I am. I can say with confidence, Dylan is also probably that. But uh, yeah, I'd love to do it. Um, yeah, Manny's out. Let's search trash him now. He's yeah. <laughs> now we can talk behind his back. Yeah, yeah. Did he talk? I, about, did he talk? I, tell the story yet about the stampede and like didn't there wasn't there a really crazy incident with the stampede? We don't talk about stampede. No, we, we always talk about, about, about stampede. stampede, stampede the other day. Talk about stampede. Of course we here. can. <sighs> Man, Helen, why don't you tell me about it? That what you know, happens in Stampede stays in Stampede. It's like Vegas. I think it's actually, what happens at Stampede is totally fine until they cancel. Oh Stampede. my goodness! Uh, we have some some other people actually with fantastic stories that want to come in. So I gotta say goodbye to a few of you, and I'm mm. sorry, Patrick Chan, Dylan Moskovich, Robbie Dixon. Robbie, we're gonna be seeing you in just a little bit. But uh, hey, Kitty, Dylan, good. Dylan, good to see your face, my hey, Robbie, friend. Great chatting with you. Yeah. Miss you guys. Patrick, we'll get on a motorcycle Hello. ride soon. Thanks, guys. And we're gonna have some beauties join us what real quick. Do, eh? Who's coming wow. in? Like with, with with Albert, like we haven't connected in forever. Is Manny putting right. Sloan to bed? Manny's best uh, no. Snyder. Uh, uh, yeah. Jeff Snyder. Whoa, Jeff. Mason Let's Raymond. Trim, let's Sin. trim the fat. And how handsome was Dylan? He's handsome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know he is. He is a. He is a oh, cheers, Joe. Up, my man? How you doing? Can you guys hear me? Perfectly. You can, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Can we? Uh, can I ask Joe Mason and uh, Manny's best friend ever, Jeff, to just quickly introduce yourselves for everyone and how you know Manny? Holy smokes! Oh, well, go ahead. Because I have all their money from the golf course. That's <laughs> go ahead, Joe. Go ahead, best friend. <laughs> just looking for it back. Hey, best well, friend. I, I think my I think my my name is pretty self explanatory, yeah. just in general. Um, no, God, Manny and I. Uh, I'm, my name is Jeff Snyder. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a uh, got a, a former uh, I don't know very average lacrosse player that is now uh, just <laughs> trying to uh, trying to keep up with with Manny on the uh, uh, on the golf course. And um, yeah, how did Manny and I meet Manny? I don't even know if I'm allowed to tell the story, like probably most stories that are out here. But if it's um, 18A, no. But uh, well, <laughs> well, I don't know. Manny and I met at a good friend of ours, uh, Mary Amatia's uh, company uh, opening at ZGM. Uh, he's a guy who did a lot of marketing work for Manny when when they developed the Manny Ski brand. And um, a great friend of both of ours. And Manny 
uh, Mario kept coming to me and saying, Hey man, you got to meet my buddy, Manny. Manny's uh, an awesome dude. He's a downhill skier. You really like him. And I was like, your stupid friend, Manny sounds brutal. I don't want to meet Manny. I've got enough friends. And then on the other side, Mario would go to Manny and be like, Hey man, you got to meet my buddy, Jeff. He's a lacrosse player. He's a, he's a really great guy. I think you guys would really hit it off. And Manny was like, I want to meet your stupid lacrosse playing buddy. That guy sounds terrible. I've got enough friends. <laughs> and then Manny and I met at this, uh, at this, uh, company opening and, uh, it was really love at first sight. We, uh, are are quite we share a lot of uh, endearing qualities that are an acquired taste maybe very binary for certain folks and uh we hit it off and had a great time and that was it history that was from long, there. Nice no story. kidding yeah. no oh, kidding hey eh? how much time we got i'm taking it I all. Thought, yeah i know i was like Phew, the love fest continues you know well, i this met me about you man go through jeff pretty much didn't i boys like it was um, yeah at some point i mean the, the well the the dolls and Mason, you're out in Invermere and uh, with Jonesy too. Uh, lots of connections. Uh, Jeff, you and, and who, you went to DU. Who else went to DU? Is that Mason or uh, Joe? You went to DU as well. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, I think Jeff and I, uh, or Jeff introduced us and then both Manny and I realized we liked each other more than we liked Jeff. So we kind of just like slid away from Jeff as much as possible. And, um, <laughs> But yeah, Manny, just, you know, congrats. Um, it's a uh, hell of a run you had. Yeah, thanks, bud. And, uh, you know, for for uh, people that don't really know, you know, Joe, Joe, Jeff and Joe came to the hospital quite a bit this last injury. Um, so much that Jeff actually, I think you were a bit jealous, Jeff, actually, because Joe hadn't reached out to you about being in Calgary. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about, man. I literally can't, I can't do anything. I'm on so many painkillers, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that Joe's been here a couple of times <laughs> in the hospital to visit me. And he hasn't texted you. I'm sure I'm maybe I'm just hallucinating buddy, but I have no idea. But um, that might've been like, that was kind of when Jeff realized that we liked each other better. I think. I, I think that's about right. Yeah. The, the two thirds. I knew I had to come in strong with something, and I <laughs> dead shot down. And Mason, I how you doing, buddy? Text message. I didn't show up like the other good guys, I guess. But I sent my love via text message. You did. You did. No, no. You you came here. Remember that that you you had the most sound advice. I was. You, I saw you first you in Invermere. Yeah. You know what? Again. Yeah. I'm Mason Raymond, guys. I'm much like Jeff. I'm a very average hockey player. So. Um, moved on to bigger and better things, I guess now, but uh, no, Manny and I, we kind of met more uh, in the most recent years through the hockey world with Dave Jones and, and uh, Joe and stuff. But uh, yeah, I get to see him a bunch now. And uh, oh, we have, uh, I have a summer place where Manny spends his time in Invermere. So uh, I thought it was fitting. I'd kind of rock a little bit of the Canada gear since uh, you represented so well, uh, Manny, for, for many, many years, uh, 16 years, I think, and four Olympics, if I'm correct. So, um, yeah, congratulations on a, on a heck of a career. It's, uh, you know, I, I never quite knew what it was like to be an Olympian until I got the opportunity and the privilege to play um, in the Olympics there in Pyeongchang. So, um, something I'm very proud of, and uh, you should be for the amount of years that you put in and the time that uh, you represented the, uh, the Canadian flag. Yeah, thanks, buddy. Thanks. Manny, you know, you you know what I like about Mason so much, Stage, is that he doesn't really rub it in that he only had to go to one Olympics to get a medal. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you who know, invited it was, it was like a, It was like a, it was like, like a, a last minute decision, too. He said, Should I go to the Olympics and get a medal? I mean, I've been doing this NHL thing for a while. You know, I'm playing in Europe. I know it would be good. It would be really good to hang that on my wall. So that's like, that's sweet that, uh, yeah. that you have one and you don't rub it in all the time, which is no. nice. No, just about half the time. You said that Mason gave you the best advice when you were rehabbing from your last injury. What was that? Oh, yeah. He, when he came over, I don't know why he had to come over. There was something to reason, but uh, you came over and you told me I have a baby. Remember? I did. <laughs> I, I that worked out. Now you got two of them, so he obviously listened, I guess. But yeah, uh, <laughs> his first advice, he said, you know, now that you're injured, being injured, the best time to, to make babies, and uh, yeah. Um, Was he right? Well, it's way easier to have babies when you're at home than being on the road. Did, you got to make the most of your time. <laughs> Zoom, do, Zoom does wonders for the world, but it's not for. <laughs> for yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Joe, do you have any uh, advice for, for Manny quickly? And Jeff, too. Let's, uh, I want to hear you more. Too, Joe. Yeah. I'm always all ears when Joe talks. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, Mace, probably a little different than when we played, but uh, Manny, I've got the place down in Scottsdale where I'm at right now, um, down to a 4.5 handicap. So oh, I'll be giving man. you a few strokes, but uh, it's, it's right and waiting when the border opens up for you. I love it, my man. I love it. 4.8. Yeah, Mace, Jesse, feel free to come down. Um, oh, I'm, I'm already on my way, buddy. I'll get yeah. you. Don't worry. Where in Scottsdale North. exactly are you by the north? It's, yeah, North Scottsdale. Perfect. Great. Yeah. So, um, yeah, all you guys are, are more than welcome to get down here. Uh, Jeff, just give me a heads up before um, so I can come up with an excuse or something. <laughs> 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 I knew yeah, I was coming on. Here. Advice. You know, well, Jeff. First, like, first, I knew I was coming on here as a punching bag. I knew that's yeah. what this whole thing was about. <laughs> Jeff, very really, every, everybody knows that you don't put best friend on anything because now everybody knows my secret password. When when I can't when I can't log into a password, they know my answer. <laughs> Jeff Snyder. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, this is, uh, listen, I've never been on one of these before, so I I, I totally blew that. Um, I changed all my passwords after this, bud. No, I think, uh, man, I, I I had the, you know, I I think watching Manny compete, um, you know, from an advice perspective, I think watching, um, you know, what you've done and and the uh, you know the level that you've competed at and the impact that you've made, uh, just in general with you know Canadian sports as a whole, is to. Uh, I think I've been fortunate enough to be able to work in the sport that that I fell in love with in lacrosse, and and after that sort of transition to something, I would I would you know I think the piece of advice that I would offer you is make sure that you don't um, hang on to all that incredible knowledge that you have, and, and make sure that you uh, uh, you know at any point in time pass that along when the opportunity arises, and once you figure out your direction, to make sure that. Um, you, know, you share as much of that as you possibly can so that other people can do uh, you know some of the amazing things that, that you've been able to do and experience some of the things that you've been able to experience so i think that would be my my biggest piece of advice is that in retirement um you know you uh you have a wealth of knowledge and uh you know the opportunity to to open up a door a door for someone just with uh a comment or uh, a piece of constructive criticism or something that that um, you know may may light a fire that uh, that that you you probably wouldn't maybe assume would so um, you know share as much of that as you can and I think you're right at home being up in Panorama I'm sure that uh, you'll catch somebody in a lift line and and uh, have an opportunity to uh, you know to share a perspective or two and and I'm sure you will. It's a, it's going to be a rough time to be retired. I got to wear a face mask when I'm skiing all, all winter. Nobody's going to recognize me. I'm going to be obsolete before when before I know it. Buddy. <laughs> just start wearing gear like this around, man. They stick out that's true. That's true, man. <laughs> I, got, I got one of those goodies. I'll, yeah, I'll make fun. sure that we go up together and, and make sure everybody knows where we got our sweaters from. <laughs> I second what Jeff said. Manny and I talked, and uh, one advice that uh, that I always took from Trevor Lennon, he always said, and I think this applies to. There's so many parallels between sport and, and business, but you know, you retire from your sport an old man essentially, but you hit the real world a young man. And Manny, you're a very, uh, very business savvy guy, and uh, you do have a wealth of knowledge, and uh, you know, a, a very knack for the second world, if you will, of uh, in the business world. So. Uh, jump right into it. You know, that's something that I know I think Joe, any of you guys uh, that are on there can vote for, you know, your your friends are still so much your close uh, uh, competition, the people that you're with or your teammates. But, uh, you know, the business world for me, uh, it was like, how's retired life? Even, you know, it must be so much time. I've never been so busy in my life and I love it, right? With kids and, and everything. And Manny, I know you're like that, uh, you know, being a father, a husband and a businessman. And and getting your degree. So uh, I tip my hat to you and yeah, use that knowledge. Like Jeff said, uh, you're a wealth of it. And uh, you know, a lot of people can learn from that. Yeah, yeah man. Thanks buddy. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers. cheers for that. Yeah. <laughs> Our um, stream yard roulette is turning now and I hate to say it, but I'm going to say goodbye to uh, Mr. Jesse Lumsden and uh, Helen Upperton, two beauties from Calgary. We miss you guys. And thank you so congrats, much. Congrats, man. Yeah, congrats. Yeah, thank you guys. Thanks for having the time. Let's bring in uh, Wade Simmons and Mr. David Jones. Oh, right on. Oh, here we Sweet. Go. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Hey, Manny. How are you? 
Hey, Simmons, how you doing? Oh, I'm going to see some familiar faces. <laughs> there we are. You Let's start off guy. easy. Uh, how do you guys know Manny? Oh, Go ahead, David. Oh, sure, buddy. Uh, I mean, I've known Manny since uh, he was my nemesis on the other side of the football pitch in, I think, elementary school, starting in grade one. Yeah. He was a, he was a French immersion guy, so, you know, we, we never really saw eye to eye, but uh, I've known him since then, and uh, he's been just an incredible athlete the whole way up. And uh, I'd say I was pretty jealous, um, you know, when he's kind of – I think at six years old was ski racing in Italy and uh, I was over whacking a puck around uh, some terrible rink in BC, but uh, you know, it's been a lot of fun to follow his career and uh, known him for a long time. Thank you. Yeah, right on. And you guys probably don't know this, but uh, you know, I didn't really want to be a ski racer when I grew up as, as luxurious as you may get down there, D um, <laughs> going to Italy. It's whatever age I was, but uh but Wade here, I, I graciously asked Wade to jump on here, but you know what? I, I think, um, you know, it's cool to get all these athletes together and you know, talk about whatever and shooting shit, but uh, Wade was my idol growing up. And I think it's pretty cool that uh, that you get to, uh, that as, as an athlete, you get to kind of, you get to meet your athletes. And Wade, you know, they, they do say, if you want to keep your idols, don't meet them. Right. Um, I've heard that. I've heard that. <laughs> That's uh, because you put them on a pedestal and there's no way down. But you know what, buddy? There's nothing that you could do. Literally nothing. Like I think it's it's pretty cool um, uh, what you did uh, in on the North Shore and the, the sport of mountain biking and and like what it's become. And uh, I mean, I wanted to be a mountain biker growing up, and um, you know, it was just lack of skill that really got in my way. So um, you I was, have so much like, potential. I was I was lucky enough to find a find a sport that would take me in and uh, and teach me some lessons and actually I mean the biggest thing with with ski racing too is that structure um, you know mountain biking was a little tough one with without uh, with without coaches and all that stuff and I definitely needed that so appreciate yeah. you coming on buddy I remember uh, well we went for that ride with Thomas Vanderham you know like uh, he was a great friend of yours in high school and I was this. Uh, working at the Cove bike shop there and you guys would, you guys were like the little shop rats. Well, not shop rats, but you guys would hang out. And then, and then, uh, Thomas's mom organized a ride. You remember that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember man. Cause he was, he like, he was like on fire that day too. He was like, Oh, let's do this drop and that drop. And I just remember you being like, Oh, this kid, this kid's really good. And, uh, and nobody else really wanted to do any of the stuff he was doing. Yeah, I think he, he had already uh, kind of done it already too. So I was, it was pretty sweet to see. I mean, you guys, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, great friends living in the cove and the, and the pool of talent that was there, you know, like look at where you went, look where Thomas went. I mean, it was bound to happen. So was, congratulations. Yeah. Thanks, bud. I want to quickly say hi to Jeff. Sorry. You just kind of popped in there like a ghost. Another mountain biker, of course. Keep it going. How's it going, Manny? Congratulations Good. on everything, bud. Hey, congratulations on doing that big ass uh, train gap the other day. Holy smokes! Dude. <laughs> that was a spooky jump. That was man. I was thinking phrase, man. Like you, you just go and just huck it because Jeff's doing it. Hey, oh, man. Yeah, I think we. Should, I think we should hit it with him. Yeah, I, I mean, haven't done, I haven't done it either. You haven't done it either. What? What? Are, are you? Are you kidding? Like, are we doing big things like that now? I figure that was like the best part about retirement is that it really didn't have to do anything. That I didn't want to. Yeah, I just anymore. shift sports. <laughs> Where That's true. Are you know, you, you always say never say never, and then you get there, and like with a, some good peer pressure, I mean, anything's possible, right? I mean, it's yeah, uh, cr crashing, well, crashing. You know, you crash on skis, crash on a bike, same thing. Yeah. Where where exactly was this like gap? Where are we talking? Because I just saw the video too. It's on Instagram, of course. It's massive. Where is this? Uh, it's up on the Sea to Sky corridor. I'm not sure if I can actually release the exact location for liability issues, but um, it's it's definitely a big jump. It's one of those moves that if it was solid in between, it would still be a big jump. But the fact that you cannot come up short makes it such a spectacular move. Go check it out on. Uh, hey, Golly, how many uh, drinks did you have to pour down my brother-in-law's throat before he took that off with you? Oh, uh, I took him skydiving first. So I think the adrenaline was flowing. You went skydiving first and then went straight to that? 
Yeah, we were running low on daylight, actually. So we got <laughs> over there and we're like, wow, like, honestly, if we could think about this and take the time to really process it before we hit it, it'd be great. But uh, we had about 20 minutes of light left and it's like, OK, uh, there it is. Let's go. <laughs> so Gully, you're saying rule of thumb is do something scarier before you do something scary. Yeah, set a precedent. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, feel, I feel like that's a that's a good way of doing it. Is that, was, yeah, that, that what it was like for skiing? Pardon me? Is that, is that what it was like for skiing, Manny? You would do something really scary and then go race it downhill, you know? Yeah, I mean, or something that, you know, like if you, if you uh, you know, just did something like, you know, I was on a team, so you just do something wrong and then you were in trouble and you knew that the only way really to make up for it was a good result or you're getting sent home kind of thing, you know? I mean, I was, you know, I was on a team. I was always being babysat, you know? Right, so. yeah. Just, it's like, this is me like growing up right now. Like dad, dad, coach, where are you? <laughs> what do I do today? Nobody sent me a schedule. I thought like, like still I, I wake up and, and feel like I, I need to have a meeting before breakfast and seven o'clock meeting before dinner. We were on the schedule for like the last 16 years. So, um, not yeah. like that free ride is a gully. No, no. But if you need to call me for a pep talk in the morning, you're welcome to Manny. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> That's hey, good. you know what's the worst schedule, Manny, is uh, retiring and being home with two little kids. <laughs> <laughs> Don't retire. Don't do it. Don't do it. Well, I, I, I wanted to take some time to retract my, my retirement statement, but, you know. <laughs> what happens, Barbie? Oh, man. It's so good, though. It's so good. Your your heart, your heart, you know, your, your mental, like, the, your mental drain is tough, I know, but, like. Uh, there's no more like crushing Netflix, is it? Like it's just yeah. that's go go go. Gully, you're the, you don't have any uh, any kids, no. but you know we're not selling it, are we? No, I've almost finished Netflix though. <laughs> no, that's good, but we were not selling retirement either. I guess so. It's perfect. You're like good as they go. I want to I want to quickly throw again because like a ghost he appears. Thomas Vanderham, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we have some amazing mountain bikers here. Um, how do you know Manny? Um, yeah, well, first off, congrats, buddy. Yeah, thanks, um, buddy. Uh, I know Manny all the way back from high school. We uh, we grew up riding together. We had a little bike little bike posse, I'd say. He and, just wasn't uh, talented, though. What's that? <laughs> he said the only reason well, he didn't become a professional mountain biker because he lacked yeah, talent. Yeah, he rode a bike <laughs> the same way that he that he skis, which is uh, kind of like a like a bowl in a china shop. So I think it worked well for skiing, <laughs> and maybe not so well on the bike. But no, <laughs> he was actually a good mountain biker, and uh, yeah, he had a he had a blossoming mountain bike career before uh, before skiing grabbed him. Yeah, yeah but, uh, but there I'm friends with them because I'm a groupie. That's <laughs> that's it, you know. <laughs> you come yeah, riding whenever you're in before, town. Before, like being a groupie was a thing, so then I carved myself into the into the scene. You know, you probably hit the bike park and panorama all the time. Oh yeah, yeah, the bike park here is great. Gully came this year. We uh, we we rode well. Actually, sorry, we didn't ro ride. We drank after. <laughs> um, but we go you know, all in the morning. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to ride with him. He's gonna find. It was getting dark out. He's gonna find some train gap or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what uh, do you have any advice for for Mister Manny Osborne parody? I'm gonna throw it to everyone, starting with uh, David, Mister Jones. What do you, what's your advice? Um. I guess first off, uh, just take maybe a few seconds to reconsider, and then. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding, Manny. I, I want to say congrats to you. It's been awesome uh, following you. Uh, I mean, for Olympics, it's just it's just hard to wrap your head around it. But uh, um, you know, I got to spend some more time with Manny uh, along the way. He does a good job of keeping in touch, and they had a race in Beaver Creek every year, and he'd always come down when I was playing in Denver, and we find a little bit of time to go have a few beers, you know, or a dozen, but, uh, <laughs> um, I think, uh, in terms of retirement, um, the biggest advice I got was if you don't birdie one of the first 18 holes, you always have a good chance of birdieing 19. So that's all I could say. Buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm excited to go play some golf though, man. That's like everybody here, man. Like John, wait, are you a good golfer? Are you a golfer? I, I am terrible. I, I don't go. Uh -huh. You're out. Uh, yeah. 
I'm out. Yeah. I, well, I know Vanderham could go less for awkward, actually, because we have a foursome here. Yeah, I know and, uh, Vanderham's good. And Gully, good but, uh, maybe you know, always like a train gap. I can learn. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> Twilight's cheap too, you know, baby. It's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I could give any advice, uh, I don't look at it as retirement. It's like next chapter, you know. Now you yep. can uh, you can dive into some things maybe that uh, that were put on hold for your awesome career, you know. And uh, yeah, it's uh, I always look at look at it positively. It's like game on. Let's do something new. Yeah, absolutely, buddy. Congrats, man. I'm uh, happy cool. to know you and, uh, you know, just the, the North Van crew and you guys, uh, just a bunch of talented uh, talented people. It's great great to know that, you know, here on, on the North Shore is just uh, pumping out great athletes. Yeah. It's awesome. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Right on. Thanks, bud. Gully, any uh, retirement advice? We've got a few that's people right. waiting in the waiting room. That's my, uh, I'm sorry. They're knocking on the door quickly. Time to upgrade the bike, buddy. Let's get back at it. <laughs> yeah, it is definitely time. It's time. Uh, now that I'm not worried about getting injured, which oddly enough is crazy, um, you know, I, <laughs> I'm probably ready to jump back on the mountain bike. Yeah, we got to get you that e-bike you've been talking about. Mm -hmm. Buddy, you'll be riding a, like one of these bikes with your kids on the back for the next 10 years. Don't even think oh, about yeah. mountain bike. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Broken arms, collarbone, your wife's going to hate you. Oh, yeah. That's what I need an e-bike so she can bike the kids and I didn't just bitch yeah. about my broken collarbone. Uh, any advice, Thomas? Oh, I, I don't have too much uh, experience on the subject yet, so I would just say let me know how it is first off. Mm -hmm. And, uh, no, I mean, enjoy the time with your family. It's going to be – I'm sure you've been uh, – it's been a hectic uh, couple decades traveling the world. So um, enjoy the time at home. Enjoy the time uh, on the golf course. And, um, yeah, it's just been awesome to, to follow your career. And I'm sure you have lots of options and, and uh, lots of exciting things planned going forward. So uh, it'll be fun to follow that as well. Yeah, absolutely, buddy. I, I can't – you know, hopefully we get a ski trip in this, this winter, hey? Let's do it. That'd yeah, be fun. Social social distance ski trip would be good. Like get some ski touring in and stuff. So you're not like one of those uh, road bikers that they spend their whole life uh, racing road bikes and they don't ride a road bike ever again. Hey, eh? you still want to ski? Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. I want to ski. Absolutely. It was snowing okay. yesterday yeah. Panama, and I was already figuring out where where we might go uh, ski touring. So you know, you know you're in the wrong sport when you uh, you don't want to do it once you retire. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Jonesy. <laughs> <laughs> Not true, David. <laughs> uh, well. Guys, cheers. We're going to throw to a video uh, of. Cheers, uh, you guys. Thanks so much for making the time. Good things on the, uh, on the cheers. slide. Cheers. Congrats. Yeah, Congrats, buddy. buddy. If he ever tries to force the issue out there and over edge, over steer, then he slows down and his natural ability goes away and that's trouble right there. It looked like some of the uh, banking there. He is very relaxed. You can see it in the way his arms are loose, naturally going back into his tuck. What I love with Manny is, yeah, he knows he's a great downhiller, but he's working very hard on his turns and his super G. He's been great here all week long. Good turns again today. Great speed. Manny Osborne parody into the lead by nearly half a second. What a final portion of the run for the Canadian. Hey. Oh, look at that. New guys. Oh, look at that party hat. <laughs> Hey, bro, look, I got my Whistler Ski Club. Look, I got my, I got my Mike and Manny. You were shirt conceived on. in this year, I think. Ninety-five. Brody oh, was. Man. I was ninety-four. Right. Look at all, look at all my, look at my Manny room. I love it. I love it. It's like mine, but I mean, it's just no, self-floating. That's, that's, that's my room, isn't it? That's a, that's a Manny shrine. Mm -hmm. Look at that. I got my big cowbell. Let's hear it. Oh, yeah, let's hear it. I, I don't know if it, if how loud it goes, maybe. It's, Kind of too loud. Right Whoa. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Broderick and Brody, uh, of course, two young guns on our national team right now. What's your favorite memory of uh, Manny and what has he taught you? Favorite memory? We got, got to think of something PG. 
It might take a while. <laughs> it can be PG thirteen. Oh. Uh, I one of, one of my favorite memories probably from when we were training together. I think it was one of my first camps uh, training with Manny and the older guys. And um, we were in in Pitstall, which is a notoriously steep hill. And <laughs> super g so it's it's probably one of the steepest hills you ski all year long for for a super g and i remember we had we had the course set up so there was a really big turn going right over this break over onto the steepest pitch we ever ski and it was really really difficult to make the next gate because you you carry a ton of ton of speed out of this turn and then you got to get all the way across the hill as it's just falling away from you and all of us were going out every single run and just trying to carve this this turn like a bunch of knuckleheads and just take as much speed as we could the whole way down. And we all blew out every single run. And Manny's kind of chuckling at us because because he's the the older veteran with, with our group and and he's he's the only guy who's made it to the finish every run so far. And he's like, "What are you boys gonna learn? Like you can't you can't carve every turn. I know that's what what your coaches tell you." your whole life growing up like you, you you can't carve every turn sometimes you just got to throw in a little slide through there <laughs> sure enough i go down and try to bring some tactics i run and just like kind of smear through the turn and then i make the gate no problem I'm like oh well damn that was, that was easy <laughs> i guess there's a little bit more to it than just <laughs> putting your head down well the trick is definitely to come like i came into the circuit with a lack of talent as well right like i didn't have as much as everybody else so i was already going quite a bit slower so it was easier to make the gates you know you had you guys had a lot of speed <laughs> and he's full of those tidbits of knowledge though every 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 day he brings another one in into the what's your favorite one oh, your favorite memory <laughs> well my favorite memory is probably my first camp with the team uh, i had no idea what i was coming into and actually Robbie was there. We were in Zermatt, beautiful downhill day, and we were all at the top. And I was just like, okay, here we go. Downhill. Manny's there and he just realizes where Robbie, Manny, and I were all standing there from the same place, same uh same subdivision in Whistler. And I don't know, that's that's stuck with me since I've been on the team. It's where we came from and where we wanted to be. And that's Manny's taught me a lot of about inspiration and confidence and it's been, it's been pretty cool. Pretty yeah. good ride. Yeah. I heard a rumor that you were a part of the Mike and Manny. Uh, oh, that, that too, yeah. How crazy is it that you were part of that camp and then you got to be teammates with them for years? That was pretty crazy. <laughs> Longevity, but, right? I mean, it, <laughs> it really gives you an insight to what, what it's going to be like on the national team. Like, I thought they were full of it when I was uh, 15 and they were <laughs> grinding my gears about what what it was like on the team and what they got what up to in, like, in this air time and and everything <laughs> like like not and it was like that it what? was exactly what it was so uh from training to uh extracurriculars with manny to tidbits of, <laughs> tidbits of knowledge that we uh picked up along the way it was all uh pretty cool so 15 to yeah now 20 awesome. 25 26 uh, I know this evening's about Manny, but I want to talk about Robbie too. Like, just what legacy have they left you boys? Well, it's, it's pretty cool Bobby. to be well, following a group that. <laughs> I thought Robbie was going to answer this. But Robbie, I, 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 I was looking at Robbie. <laughs> Do I know? No. Go ahead, Rob. Say what you got to say. Yeah, uh, Brody's saying something first. Oh, Brody, let's hear what you. Our youngest, to... uh, Brody. Mm -hmm. well, that's that's a question we get asked a lot, actually, because because we've kind of had that in Canada. We had the legacy of the crazy Canucks, and then these guys came up behind, and and they were the next real group to establish something like that. And we've had a lot of people uh, ask our group, like, "Are we gonna are we gonna have something like that? Are we gonna have a, a, a new name for ourselves um, to follow up the Canadian Cowboys?" and I don't, I, that's, that's been a huge inspiration for us. Like I would love to be able to establish a, a team culture and a, and a group like that, that we can carry forward and, and pass on the way these guys did it to us. But I don't think we quite have, we don't have a name on it yet. I think it's going to be up to, up to some, the people watching to decide on that maybe, but yeah, we'll see. I think it'd be a really cool legacy to be able to pass on. Yeah. I think the legacy is the, the reason 
that we are here as as alpine team athletes is because of them growing up in whistler watching robbie and probably being next door to me bringing over equipment or stories or uh just seeing him on tv after seeing him at home is is pretty cool so i think we can thank them for that legacy that they've uh, provided us just, yeah. just the, the reason that that we're here is we saw them and we wanted to be like them so yeah I, as a kid too i also when i was just getting into racing didn't necessarily want to be a ski racer like you said earlier manny and and uh hey, it's it pretty easy growing up in whistler you just want to like free ski and mountain bike and do all that stuff and um i also didn't really know anything about ski racing because i didn't have much of a of a history of it in in my immediate family but coming in and and seeing guys like you who were who were having success and came through the same program that we were in um and setting that example being role models and also showing how it can be fun that that life uh that was huge and i hope that we can do that for for other young kids coming up too thanks buddy cheers well. yeah and you know cheers it's, that. it's yeah cheers. cheers and it's it's uh it's a hard act to follow i mean you know when we had the guys like like brody you ski a lot like robbie Robbie skis a lot like uh, like Darren Robs did or DDA Kush. Like you've got you've got resemblances, you know, and um, it's good for the guys to be able to pull that off, uh, especially like a Broderick who's who's uh, dealing with like a little bit more oomph in his skiing, like me, you know, and like finesse and, and um, the gliding. And, uh, I always enjoyed. I watched Robbie a lot. I mean, I learned from you a lot, Robbie. Um, you know, that's you, such good, good talent uh, and good finesse on the skis. And you still ski like a champ. That's the best part. Like, I just love it. So I just can't wait to uh, do a team with you. Yeah, I can't wait to actually ski too, man. It'd be, it'll, this will be really great. I mean, a winter in North America to be able to ski, is just sounds like, like a, a dream, you know, no more, no more uh, um, cruising through a, a, a country every weekend and, and, uh, all of that, and I get to just wake up in the morning and watch you guys and uh, see what what you're going to pull off. Hey, uh, we'll Rob send you Bradley, updates. Who's um who's skiing faster out of the two of you? Me. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have confidence. What's up with that, Brody? What's going on? <laughs> it's pretty back and forth right now. I'd say we yeah, got pretty, pretty really good. pretty what's going on for the whole. But who's beating you? Nobody or somebody? Nope. <laughs> Yo, you, especially that Manny, you, you know you can't ask us that. You told, you've taught us that you've taught us how to be. Yeah, yeah. confidence. It's key. Yeah. Confidence. Yeah, confidence, Trump skill every time, boys. Yeah. Boys, we've got uh, a few other special guests in the waiting room. Um, so cheers! Thank you so much for hey, joining us. Thanks for coming, Robbie. Love you, guys. Cheers, bro. Cheers. Take care. You look good. Ooh. We are blowing through this, and then I saw we've almost hit the now hour mark. Who do we have coming up? I think some uh, big names, Mr. Michael. Hey, big Manny. guy. Hey, Monga. Hi. Hey. Oh, man. Oh, man. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Love it. Louis, hey? mm -mm. Those are the Those are the mugs that we were pounding through when we were in Banff last time, huh? Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm. If yeah. I can start off. Oh, Eric's here. Uh-oh. Oh no. Uh oh. Oh yeah. And cookie. Oh, oh, nice. Cheers, everyone. Thank you for joining. Mm -hmm. Cheers, so Manny. And more guys get along, I'm not sure, but everybody else should be okay, right? <laughs> <laughs> Where do we start? Eric, let's Yeah, this is the section that Manny loves the flatter parts. He's just nicely back in his tuck, making some mistakes, but living on the edge. The Canadian team could take a second medal here. Manny Osborne Paradis tucks for the line, and he's there! Oh, bronze for Paradis! It is Canada ruling supreme! My internet's really, really terrible. Sorry, guys, I don't know if you're talking. <laughs> I said, where do we start? And then that video, that video started. That's where we start. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Eric, are you with us? You're a little bit frozen. <laughs> Let's go. To Kelly. <laughs> Kelly, how are you doing? How exciting uh, to be here just toasting, uh, obviously a teammate, and then being on the CBC uh, team watching is 
his uh, career unfold? It's um, it's huge, I have to say. I still remember flying back home uh, on the plane. I think we were both 16 years old, Manny. Yeah. And uh, it was the first time I like had a couple hours to just sit and chat with Manny when uh, he wasn't you know, in a loud bar drinking. And uh, and he had the most beautiful girlfriend at the time, Rachel Roosevelt. And, he, and then he goes on to date Lana and all these beautiful women. And I'm just like, you know, Jeff said it. I mean, people just fall in love at first sight, right, Manny? It's got to be something about those looks. I don't know what it is, but uh, pretty special guy, amazing career. It's been awesome to follow it. Congratulations. And um, yeah, I look forward to the next chapter, man. Oh, Kelly, that's super nice of you to say. Uh, I don't know Mr. what it was, you know, it was girls, but from Austria, by the way, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look at you, you hey. look half, half asleep, buddy. You no, that's Manny. Bedtime. Well, as, as Manny's ex roommate, <laughs> we used to go to bed at this time. Now I'm waking up. I know it's ridiculous. I remember, remember, I, I remember when we, uh, after your Olympic medal, and we were packing up and trying to like find our stuff and like, I mean, what a mess. And uh, <laughs> I got down to the bottom of the gondola and I looked down and I had taken your bag and you had to go do that media tour and I had your medal. And I was like, oh my God, how do I get this guy's medal back? So we can go like, you were flying to Toronto or something to go and do like a media tour. And I had your medal and uh you know, that's as close as I ever got to getting an Olympic medal. I had it for a bit. Oh, you had it. You had it. You had it almost as long as I did. <laughs> At that point, that's true. Thank you very much for that, buddy. <laughs> so, so instead, you picked up a couple world champs medals. Hey, I, I'm just, uh, I'm honored to be here. I actually woke up. Can you believe it? Oh, dude, I'm honored to be only for you. Like, leave it to you. Only, I love it, buddy. Only, hey, Manny wore pants for this, guys. This is like a big deal. I've been, I've been down here all day without pants on. <laughs> my butt off. Yeah, but you're, it's because you guys are lucky. If we did this, if we did this, uh, if we did this live retirement till midnight, then you know. It's gonna be okay. Then we, you'd be, be a no pads party. Yeah, <laughs> is this one of the first times you've been on time for like a ski meeting? I was early. I was yeah. That's touche. Touche. You were early, buddy. This is, this is not about me, Dustin. This is about that. <laughs> <laughs> but this oh, is man. part I used of, to play this Maddie, game. This is part of retirement. Being on really? time. Now I'm on time everywhere. I have to be. Yeah, I feel like I feel like Mike maybe doesn't know this, or you know, because on the. But I used to play this game when 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 Jan was my roommate. I he was so you're very sneaky. You're very very sneaky, and and I don't know when you leave and when you come. And you're actually a really great roommate, and most importantly is your roommate because you're never there, never. And I would play this game where I would like roll over in the morning and be like, oh, I wonder if Jan made it back to my room or wherever Jan was, and I think it was like. 50-50. I feel like if, if we I started really calculating, I was like, is Yan going to be beside me? And I'd roll over. Oh, Yan never was here. <laughs> or you get man. the big spoon. <laughs> We're Yan on the phone. Yan on the phone. Rooming with Yan is always the phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or when you got your world champs medal, Yan, and you're sleeping on the, on the uh, pull-out couch um, cushions on the floor in the living room because we they screwed up and we didn't have enough enough beds and uh you slept there with that computer that you had borrowed from a library because this is a long time ago you guys, right and it, it remember it, it like it had a motor on it and it a real motor it did it, it, it and, a very uh, loud fan and very it's, loud it's, fan. it's gas it's power always, it feels i feel like it's always that the case like whenever like world champs like whoever got like the nastiest sleeping Quarters always got the metal. <laughs> True. I got I got frostbite on my knee at that race because I was sleeping beside the register. And it was so cold that my knee was touching the metal register and I woke up in the morning and I had my knee was stuck to the to the to the heater. It's the glam, isn't it? It's, it's the, the glam. glam. It's the glam. Yeah, it's the glamour. People don't know the, the glamour of athletics. <laughs> I'm afraid to talk because Coach I feel like my internet's so phone. bad that it's just going to be glitchy. All right, Eric. Hey, well, you have fun with data, hey, man. I'll <laughs> <laughs> send you my Eric. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that just reminds me. I was I had a statistic of who made the most prize money. So oh, yeah. you know, yeah, it, it was it, you know. So you could use that, Eric. It's okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> out of us, out of us here. Yeah, it would be okay. Yeah. Hey, look I at Daddy like Big. Right right I feel like this yeah. is more of a rope. Yeah. <laughs> there are no. I, I have so I have to say uh, Manny taught me uh, one really important thing in my career and uh, I was sort of like really trying to throw down and this is in Chile in Portillo one time and Manny just went up to me and was like why are you trying so hard and I was like because I want to be good he's like there's no crowds there's no prize money why the would you try like this is where you practice this is where you try crazy things you just get a feel get a flow and like then if you're gonna do it do it in front of the crowds and i swear to god it was some of the best advice i got oddly enough from a, a speed demon because i was like you can't go that hard all the time you have to actually be able to take a log off the fire in order to be a racehorse and so manny helped me be a racehorse it was uh yeah, right subtle on. advice but it was awesome it was Taught me how to be a little bit lazier. It was great. <laughs> Man, I don't know what you guys have all this advice. Where was all the advice from you guys so I could have been better? I mean, like, there I was. Dude, you're, this, bohe you're bohemian and you don't listen to advice. That's actually a good yeah. point. I, I actually I need to work on my listening skills now that I'm out in the in the real world. You know, when I was living one dimensional and I had worked on one thing, I've been working on really like three or four things in my skiing for like the last 15 years, right? So to, to no success either, <laughs> you know, like I just, that's all I had left to work on and, and I never got any, I never, I never achieved it. So like you guys, you know, we, we, we spend a lot of our time, our lives working on a couple of useless things that we can throw out as soon as we're retired. So, um, it's, it's good. What's it like deleting all that info? I'm pretty excited to just start deleting it all. No, you actually, once you retire, you actually think about it more when you're skiing, you'll see. Because you don't get to ski as much anymore, so you just ah. focus on those little things. But it I mean, skiing becomes more ski, enjoyable. You don't even have to work. Yeah, yeah. skiing is more fun though. It just doesn't really matter anymore. Yeah. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, that's yeah. good. Uh, my ski boots, my ski boots are so comfortable. They added ten years to my life, probably. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And we're one of the few sports that we actually get smaller in retirement, not bigger. So that's kind of <laughs> Mike. Sure Mike is an smaller? example. Look how Look. tiny you are, Mike. Yeah. Eat some more. Holy! Is that <laughs> oh man, Morgan <laughs> Pretty tells me Mike that all tiny? the time. <laughs> Holy smokes! <laughs> Yeah, like, who's, right? I thought there was no man no over there. Dude, I was like trying to figure out. I'm on my phone. I'm like, who's that tiny guy on the right? Is he a cross country skier? I didn't know Manny was hanging out with cross country skiers. What's up, Jack? Hey, hey. Uh, you know, we we have hung out with cross country skiers. We remember, uh, was it you, Yan? Maybe it was Robbie. We went, we we met up with a couple cross country skiers and went went out in Europe and. Um, <laughs> It was an early night. I mean, they they were like so wrecked, and we had to. It was it was it was tough. It was tough because we only had one night to go out, and um, and I really didn't want to call it quits at like ten o'clock. But we had to take care of them and get them all home and take them on the train. How, how are you the handling? Real athletes, isn't that the truth? Well, how are you handling? If you didn't want to go home at ten, how are you handling uh, this whole Corona thing? We have to. The bars are closed and check at eight. Actually, they closed the bars completely. <laughs> you wouldn't survive here. Well, no, I, I don't think bars are open, at least in Toronto. Yeah, we're. I'm. I, you know, it's it's living. busy here, Yan. I don't know what you're talking about. You know. <laughs> hey, Manny, I have uh, in on your honor. I did put on a downhill suit for the first time since uh, <laughs> since I retired. Okay, second time, second time. But I have a story between Yan and Manny that we were training them the difference between downhillers and and, and bulbs or tech skiers uh besides that we're apparently twitchy or something but um <laughs> so we're in team in in summer training and we come onto the gondola and like me patty Biggs, you know whatever koozie we're on the on the tram loading in and the doors are about to shut and in comes in in comes like calling from behind manny and yan Full downhill suit, weighing in probably at 220 pounds, 215. Manny's already grain. Yan has a shaved head. And I just look at these, like, 
10, 12 turn around of these like massive humans walking in in spandex, holding the door. And then <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Felix, uh, Nurrider, who was one of the German racers who was like, man, he's a racer? I always thought he was a coach. <laughs> 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 You legit. But for sure, coach. somebody. <laughs> so the amount of times that I met people like like physios from like the U.S. team or whatever that are just like walk-ons that don't don't know our team, but like you know don't know ski racing, and then you like hang out with them and have a beer, and they're like, "So what are you doing tomorrow?" And I'm like, "Well, I'm fucking racing. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm in the top 15 here." And they're like, "Oh, sorry, I." Like I thought you were the physio or something. And I'm like, we're, we're sitting beside our physio. Like, there's not two of us. Mm, Lauren, uh, <laughs> I want to to work out like this. You know, like <laughs> I show up to the gym every day and watch everybody else work out. It's tiring, man. I gotta, I gotta show up. Oh, my, the best thing about Manny, I don't know if you remember the Vengen. I don't remember what year, but oh. you came. That's my best memory of Manny. You came at the finish line. Cross the finish line first place and took your ski off, put it uh, uh, like a squat bar and started doing squat in the finish line. <laughs> and this, not many people in the world can do this. Like at the uh, bottom was... of Vengen, your your toes, your, your legs are done. And Manny, <laughs> just because you heard something from someone that said Manny's out of shape and he actually did it. That's best memory ever. Yeah. Right Hands on, down. Right. Yeah. Oh. Uh... We're dropping like flies, so I wanna I wanna round us up and uh, hear some of your retirement advice. No, Panda's back. Jan Hudek's back. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't wake up at three thirty to be here for five minutes. I'm all to the end. <laughs> <laughs> I actually I'm just closing my eyes to pretend I was sleeping. I'm just coming back from the pub. <laughs> you said they're closed at eight. Not open. Yeah, yeah, but when you got friends in high places, they stay open. Yeah. <laughs> just uh, Mike, what is your uh, best retirement advice? Uh, well, I was going to say something funny. Helen's re advice was actually quite incredible. I don't know if anyone yeah, knew it was. that. It was. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I didn't hear it. for me, it was do nothing as long as possible. Uh, there's a lot to explore. Uh, we apparently have other interests and other talents outside of sport. Uh, and it takes time to let those come through. So do nothing for as long as possible. But you have children, so I don't know how that really fits in. But I, I can do nothing for, like, a bath time. And then I start hearing yeah. them. You know, like, I, I 15 minutes, maybe if I run downstairs, I can do nothing. But I get it, Mike. I get it. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I, you know, lots of advice from that. Like people have said, uh, you know, slow down the transition, figure out who you are, all that stuff. And yeah, I'm pumped, man. I'm pumped to hang out with my kids a lot. You know, that's like be super fun. Thanks, Mike. Dustin? I mean, I honestly feel like Manny and I have been retired for about the same amount of time at this point. Manny might have been retired for longer with the injuries. <laughs> Can I go with the story instead? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Are you kidding me? Yes. Absolutely. Uh, well, the, one of my, not my favorite memory, but one of my funniest memories of Manny was the first time I ever met you. You for sure, I think, don't remember this, but we were at Farnham, that wonderful place, and you guys were the World Cup team. I was this young kid, like, on the development team and looked up to you and Mike and Jan and Johnny and Eric and all those guys for such a long time, and I'm on this, we're in this cat getting taken up, and I'm in the gondola for the first time, or in the cat for the first time ever seeing you guys, and I'm, like, shell-shocked, and then you just <laughs> look over at me and go, buddy, you got a heater on your face. You want me to pop that? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm in front of all of my idols, just like mortified. Oh, glad I was breaking the ice, man. I, I'm glad I broke the ice for you. Uh, it was great. It was great. Uh, <laughs> remember it forever. Uh, Jan? <laughs> I thought this was a PG show. <laughs> PG 13. <laughs> oh, man. Um, I feel like Manny doesn't need very much advice. He was like, he's kind of, uh, you know, I just remember when, whenever we were in a crunch 
and we were in lots of crunches, <laughs> but not like workout crunches. We barely ever did those. But <laughs> when we were, when whenever we were in a crunch, Manny always, you know, always had an answer and always or always had an anecdote. And I think that's that's probably my fondest memory of uh, of Manny, besides all the sleeping together and stuff. And uh, <laughs> it was just, you know, it's, and you know, Mike, Mike's kind of like a guy like that as well, but like to have an answer for absolutely every single sentence that comes out of someone else's mouth or like every single situation, but not being completely stupid, like being extremely obnoxious or perhaps completely like irrelevant, but somehow making so much sense that you just can't argue. It just shuts down the entire conversation. <laughs> and I've learned a lot from that for Manny for the last, you know, for, for my retirement. And uh, Manny used to give, uh, I, I admired him for not giving any fridges. What are you allowed to say? Zero. Yeah, that's Manny, good. Manny gave zero fridges when we were growing up never and one, fridge. <laughs> one fridge once but never after that never and never. i always gave a fridge i was always worried about what people what people thought and i uh i always admired manny a lot for that and uh, i learned a lot from him from that aspect and now that i'm old and retired i realized well what am i waiting for i got no more fridges to give and <laughs> that's what i'm taking away from from, from manny and in, in our time together and um, as far as advice, I mean, if there's anything that I can even say is, I mean, obviously you've got, you've got your little bambinos now and you know how important that is. Um, I was just always home. I just stayed injured. So I was always hanging out with my kids before I retired <laughs> Smart. Built, up, built up, built up a good relationship with them before I stopped skiing. Um, but, uh, I think one thing that I've had a chance to do now that I'm in Europe is travel around to the places that. You know, we're pretty lucky as skiers to, to travel the world. And I think skiers are, are good for that, that we, we do realize how fortunate we are. Um, but now to be here in Europe and be able to travel around and like visit the families that we stayed with and the hotels and see the mountain passes that we used to try to get up with chains in the winter or push vans out of ditches to see them in the summer and to see how, how beautiful, you know, the world is then. That's that's something I suggest. And now in these times, it's it's getting tougher and tougher. So I think it's uh, something even in Canada. You know, Canada is such a such an amazing and huge place that we're all so fortunate to grow up in. Uh, pack your kids in an RV and just like go for a rip. But yeah, that's what right. I say. That's my Thanks. suggestion. Yeah, pack the fridge. Yeah. I'll pack the fridge. <laughs> pack the freezer pack with the, the ice fridge cream and go RV in. And don't like pack the fridge, but don't give a fridge. You know, don't give, don't give no fridge. No fridge. Yeah. Uh, Louis Pierre. Yeah, uh, I mean Manny. All the memories, all the the things we've done. The, the uh, I mean, congrats on everything. You're a role model to so many, and I know so many little boys out there, little little girls, are just. Uh, probably kept skiing a little bit longer uh, because of you. Um, uh, I mean, retirement is just the next step in your life. Uh, I've been retired now for four and a half years, five years maybe, I don't know. Uh, but it's just literally just the next chapter and you have to take whatever you had before, use it. Uh, skiing, for me, I keep telling everybody I meet. I meet a lot of people. I run a restaurant so i meet a lot of people put put it out there yeah ticino <laughs> restaurant in banff there you go. <laughs> it's awesome it's it really is good really but is good. uh it's just the the ski world just gave us so many tools so many opportunities to shape our life for now and uh, just use it for your retirement and uh the most important thing right now is your family as you know we've talked a few times and it's busy, but it's amazing. So, uh, good luck. But I know I'm gonna see you pretty soon. I'm sure every now and then, and then uh, maybe I'll go crash at your place again with my kids and have a little kid party, tea party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And uh, 
Kel, last but not least, of course. Um, I think uh, there's been a lot of amazing things said. Helen, you know, giving love back for sure. And Mike, I'm going to parrot a bit what he said there as far as, you know, really taking your time. There's a few things that seem so exciting and the perfect fit. And I almost ran into, ran, rushed into stuff that wouldn't have been the right move. Um, but for myself, I think you should go buy a new set of golf clubs. Go buy yourself a new bike. Uh, maybe it's some stand-up paddle boarding. It's actually pretty easy electric on the bodies. Bike. Yeah, electric bike. Actually, electric bike, stand-up paddle boarding, really good for post-ski racing bodies. Um, but otherwise, uh, one big thing I learned when retirement and when you have jobs and things like that, I mean, when you're skiing, your whole life is just this one thing. You have one association. There's one path. And you can't quit. And I learned later in life, you can quit. <laughs> you, you don't have to take a job and for, do it for life until you're broken and destroyed. You're allowed to say, oh, this isn't the right fit and move on. And that, that actually took me a while to figure out. So um, do what you want to do. You'll do amazing. Uh, everybody loves you, Manny. You have one of the best support networks I know. So uh, we're all here for you. And congrats. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you guys so much. Mike, thanks for being down suit on, my man. Like, uh, oh, I only put on a small suit. It's only that. <laughs> oh, that's fair. That's He's fair. He's lying. He's going out tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's putting it on. Thanks, Eric. Don't have to wear the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Eric yeah, is apologizing for his uh, Wi Fi. Inspired a lot of people. You should be really proud. Thank you. And we'll. Mm -hmm. We'll hopefully pitch in twenty bucks for him to get a better. You know what's, <laughs> you know what's classic, Manny? Thanks, Eric. You know, what's, Eric? you know what's classic, Manny? <laughs> you guys. The, when you told the young guys, uh, Bro Broderick and, and Brody, and you're like, "Confident Trump's," uh, would you say, "Confident Trump skill all the time"? Meanwhile, he'll tell them that. Yet he'll go do like ten more runs of downhill training and not tell them that he's working on his skill. That's <laughs> the competitive Manny that no one sees. Yeah, like, yeah just just be confident. And then he's out there like 10 more hours on the hill than everyone else in a week. So <laughs> kudos to you, Manny. <laughs> There's always a place. But right, yeah, remember that, that time that you were in sick in Chile and I had to let you know that that was a hangover? And I said, don't worry, at like 5 p.m. you'll be fine. And you're like, no, man, it can't be. I, I didn't drink much last night. I was like, no, I think you just started drinking. 5 p.m. I think you'll be good. And clearly. And yeah, by the way, Manny taught me how to drink. <laughs> all his but I also thank taught you, you the time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Manny, you know you said to keep your uh, to keep your idols. Your idols don't meet them. I think you might be the opposite. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good because I've met Wade, and Wade Wade's the opposite too. You know, They're, these guys. Uh, you know, maybe maybe it's maybe that's not the best saying anymore, hey? Yeah. Maybe not. Who knows? As long as not the good idols. Idols not a douche. <laughs> you, uh... All right. Thanks, you guys, so much. Thanks for coming on here. Thank you. Manny, Thanks this was so your, this is your so you great. got the mic, you got Manny. the white hot spite, spotlight. Uh, do you have any anything you want to mm. say before we shut it down? Oh, man, you know what? Like, I just want to thank everybody, all the athletes that, that came on here. Um, you know, it's pretty cool that, uh, that, I've, that I've met such a wide range of, of athletes and that uh, – um, these select few um, were able to be successful in in their journeys and their sports. And I mean, it's 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 uh, a lot of stars have to align to be good at, at any sport. And I mean, you have to be you have to be um, introduced to it, and you have to have parents that care and that can that can uh, can afford it. And you need a co uh, community around you to embrace it, and you need the the right friends. And I mean, it's it's not it's not an easy task and I'm so fortunate to have all of these people around, um, in my life and, um, from, from all the other people too. I mean, it's that, that's just a select few that, that, that made it. I mean, the journey, um, through so many of my friends that, that didn't make it in skiing or didn't make it in other sports and then went on to become, um, so, so professional and, 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 uh, excel in, in other fields. And they, they took what they had learned from, from their, triumphs and and defeats and and whatnot and then obviously just you know every single volunteer that has helped um us uh become who we are i mean in canada all our races are done by volunteers and i mean we wouldn't have ski racing if it if it if it weren't from the volunteers uh from when we were like 12 years old 12 to 10 11 whatever um giving their time giving their weekends giving their vacation time um and giving us the uh 
the ability to do what we want to do. And then, um, you know, ACA on the podium, uh, you know, and then everybody that supported us behind the scenes, uh, Canada, I mean, it was real. So, um, I, uh, I, I want to thank everybody. And, um, last but not least, you know, um, my, my family, my, my, my grandpa, my mom, um, my late stepdad, Bill, uh, you know, my dad, Kenji, my little brother, Lana, uh, Sloan, she was around for a race. Toby hasn't really done much for my career, but, uh, in fact, he's, he's kind of ruined it actually. So <laughs> that guy doesn't get too much praise, but the rest of them, um, you know, I love you and uh everybody it's just been it's been a wild ride and uh i'm glad i have a leg and i'm glad i have uh i'm glad i've got a career that uh that i can be proud of and um yeah it's it's just been amazing so thanks so much thank you you know um medals and trophies are wonderful but when all is said and done you're left with your values and I think tonight the people that have come and uh, rallied around you and toasted and roasted and everything in between is uh, a testament to who you are. And again, I'm honored to have hosted this and uh, I'm a little starstruck because there was a, a lot of superstars, including yourself that joined. So again, Manny, congratulations. It's an emotional thing for an athlete to hang him up and uh, you're just going to do great things. And this is the next chapter. So Thank you so much, my good man. Anyone that wants to uh, rewatch this, it will live. Um, and we've got some wonderful content celebrating his amazing career. Again, 16 years, four Olympics, six world championships. Um, just unbelievable, unbelievable career representing the Maple Leaf. Uh, it is living on cbcsports.ca. Hit him up on social uh, and let's continue this conversation and to uh, celebrate a fantastic career. Thank you guys for watching and uh, good night. Really appreciate it. Cheers.